Miles Dempsey, um, it, it's almost impossible to sum the man up in words. H how can you sum up uh, a man uh, who's full of the Holy Spirit? There's many memories I could share about Miles, but for, for the Prince of Peace community, he's the founder and leader. Miles Dempsey is like an Elijah figure. He was a man full of the Holy Spirit who um, was charismatic. He, he had many of the charismatic gifts as listed by St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 12. He was an amazing preacher. He could hold a congregation in his hand. What one memory I have, he was stood uh, preaching in a church and there was a, a, a lady on about the fourth row. And as he lifted his hand like this and said the name Jesus, this woman fell, slain in the spirit and landed on the chair that was behind her. And this had an impact on me as I watched. I could see before me a man who uh, was powerful, yet humble. The first time I met Miles Dempsey properly uh, was just after my mum passed away. I went to the hospital and it was late at night on a Friday night when they had prayer ministry and I was driving back home and I thought I'll just pop into the Prince of Peace for prayer and hopefully Miles Dempsey's there because he has a reputation of healing and I just needed something. I needed support, I needed help, I needed peace. I was grieving and so I walked in and there was a group of people in a circle praying over each other and I sat down and shared with them what I was going through and they started praying over me. But you just want Miles Dempsey and as good as that was and it was very effective the prayer, I just thought for some reason I just need Miles to pray over me. And then he came in and as he came in towards the circle where we were praying, one of the leaders, Mary, she said, John's having a hard time, Miles, we just prayed over him. And then Miles' response, I'll never forget, he said, well, I'll pray over him some more. And he put his hand on my heart and his other hand on my head and he started to pray. And as he's praying, you just feel the love of God and you just feel what a gift, what an absolute gift at this moment in time when I need this the most because I just couldn't go home in that, that state of grief, it just would have got worse and I just felt like a weight lifting and I just felt the peace of God and the love of God. He would disappear off every so often into his um, office and or into the chapel and he would just be praying. He prayed the whole rosary all the decades every day. Uh, he would be in the chapel in the evenings. Um, when we lived in the community I very often woke up in the middle of the night and I used to go in the chapel and nine times out of ten he was there before I arrived and he was still there when I left. Um, the Bible was always near him. Whenever there was a problem or something unexpected happened, his reaction was always, what is the Lord saying here? Um, which helped us to focus on, you know, that whatever happens, we should look to the Lord. Um, he was ready to pray with any individual that asked him, both of the community, people made appointments, people came from France and Portugal sometimes to have prayer from Miles. Um, we had prayer every morning together in the community and he was the most prayerful person that I've ever met and because by the time I met him he was retired and for many years not terribly fit he would spend many hours in prayer um, and then but he would still go abroad to spread the word to wherever he was asked. He carried illnesses 
Uh, we all remember he was in a wheelchair for the latter part of his life, but he, he carried uh, problems with his legs, but yet he was a man that traveled the world. Nearly 40 times he went to Fatima in Portugal on ministry. I remember being with him there twice and it was in Fatima where he first called me son. And it was a realization over about a 12 year period that it was like, a, you, you know, he was, he, his character was very much like St. Paul. He, he was stubborn in a positive way. Uh, he was uh, but patient and loving. I remember absolutely vividly, I would say that Miles Dempsey, next to the Lord Jesus Christ, he changed my life more than any other person in my life uh, that I've ever met. Um, we went as a prayer group, there were about six of us. Um, the first thing that happened was I was in a very bad place. I was praying intensely for my husband. He had an alcohol problem. It was fairly recent. He was in a terrible state physically, spiritually. Um, he was depressed and I was trying to um, bring him into the faith he wasn't a Catholic, um, and I, I was praying intensely for him, Naveenas, appealing for his, his health and his soul, and um, he just, at the last moment, I told him where I was going to go that night, and he said, I'm coming with you. Um, I received a word from God at that moment which said, this has taken all his courage, and it really just touched my heart, and he got in the car, we were in two cars, and from then, um, as I say, we met Miles and everything changed. Um, when Miles prayed over him, he prayed over him in the spirit, he was almost had like an on-the-spot conversion. It was as literal as that. This man went from atheism to adoration in one go. He had a healing from Miles, a physical healing of his knees. When we got home, he was jumping around the house for joy. It was like a child at Christmas. I just couldn't explain what was happening. He asked me what was, what, what noise he was making. I was trying to open the Bible and say, this is in Acts 2, this is speaking in tongues. All the charismatic gifts Miles displayed in about the first 10 minutes of, of meeting him. He, he spoke in tongues, he prophesied out. He knew there was a problem with someone in the room who had an alcohol problem, had an addiction. Um, he prophesied, he opened a Bible and that, the, the reading related to us. Um, he, he knew what was in our hearts when he prayed, he put his hand on our, each of our heads and he knew. Um, I just knew this man was something special and I knew he had a special anointing from God. So that was, that was the first meeting with Miles. On a personal level, it was like having a kind of very, very wise grandfather that I could just go to. And I used to go every Saturday from work. I just couldn't wait for Saturday morning. I woke up, I went to mass in the Prince of Meath community. I realised that was part of his vision, of his spirituality. The community, it was, it was an accepting, all-embracing community. Everybody was happy. Everyone was busy working but praying. So God was interwoven into every aspect of their life. So we prayed before meals, we prayed every day, throughout the day. Um, everyone was accepted there. He used to teach us just spontaneously, just sit there. Any problem that you had, he would pray with you, he'd give you advice. It was just a beautiful place. One uh, experience that I'd like to share, it was the 2nd of August, 2017. Now we didn't know at the time, but that was going to be Miles' last new dawn physically. And uh, it was the day of a plenary indulgence to Our Lady of Porto Cunchula, the St. Francis of Assisi plenary indulgence. And so we agreed to, to, do, to meet the criteria of the plenary indulgence. And one of the conditions was to visit a Franciscan church or friary. But there was no way that we could visit. Uh, this was during the week of New Dawn. And then we realised that the, the Franciscan friary that was destroyed by it during the Reformation over 480 years earlier, perhaps we could go and just pray at the entrance, at the walls. So we drove down, and because Miles was uh, not able to get out of the car, I pulled the car right up to the wall, and he laid his hands on the walls of the friary. And I went round the back of the car and laid my hands too. And we both simply prayed in the spirit, and Miles led, and he called 
the fire of the Holy Spirit down upon the friary. Less than a year later, and soon after his own death, the Franciscan friars, the Grey Friars, after over 480 years, returned to Walsingham. With Miles, I would like to remember him as a father figure, because I shared things about myself to him that I couldn't share with my own father. We just don't have that relationship. We don't have that openness. I'm not able to be vulnerable with my own father in a way that a son should, in a way that's natural for a son to be vulnerable with his father. And because mine doesn't have God, so even if I was vulnerable, there's not a whole lot he could do because prayer is the answer. And it's the most natural thing in the world for a father to pray with their child when they're being vulnerable or they're being open and they're hurting. That's what I had with Miles. I was able to share things about him that I wouldn't share with anybody else. You know, my real weaknesses, my real insecurities, my real shame and fears. And as I, rem and yeah, I remember doing this, I remember sharing these things with him. And I also remember expecting judgments back because you do when you're ashamed, you expect the other person to judge you or not like you anymore or look at you in a way that's slightly off but even though they, they could, you know, like they can't help it, but they do that. But he never did. He, it was as though he liked me all the more for it. And to have somebody who loves you all the more for your weaknesses and your vulnerabilities and your shame and your guilt and your sins, to have somebody love you all the more for that, that's a human experience of God. Miles was an amazing person and I've never met anybody else like him. When I first met him many years ago, um, we started to go to the prayer group which was then in the south of England and he was actually in the same parish as us, the community was. And to tell you the truth, at the beginning I was a bit scared of him and I used to make sure that I wasn't standing beside him coming out of church because I was so much in awe. But as I got to know him, we got more involved in the community. Um, he actually called me out to pray over him. And up till then, I'd seen nobody except Miles pray. And I was terrified. <laughs> but he really, he took me under his wing, I think. Oh, back in the day, many, many moons ago, um, I was at a particular conference and um, a young man named Michael came up to me and said, Roz, I would love you to meet Miles Dempsey. And I said, wow, I, I really would like to meet him because I'd heard a lot about Miles Dempsey. Anyway, Michael arranged uh, that I, I go to the community um, in Liverpool to meet Miles. And what happened was I was on the M6 driving and um, a lorry came past me and it was a Daily Mail uh, lorry and it just said on the side, Miles Moore Scope. <laughs> and it really was prophetic because when I met Miles, you know, we got on like a house on fire. And in my life, spiritually, uh, Miles... Um, um, showed me great favour and opened up many doors for me as a speaker and um, I started um, to go to New Dawn every year and uh, he asked me if I would do like the morning intercession also to be um, <clears throat> one of the main speakers so that's that's my story of meeting Miles initially. He always used to say about Walsingham um, he, he, he would say uh, that Catholic Church with all the lights on and I love the way he, he, he really uh, he, he brought out the tradition he taught about what we believe as Catholics he just so loved our lives lady um, and especially when we were in the shrine of Walsingham but by the same token he was so charismatic and hands-on and so full of life and he was a man that I 
learnt an awful lot from and even um, even in his latter days uh, when he was poorly spiritually he, he remained 10 out of 10. Well the first time I met Miles was about 14 years ago at the Prince of Peace community in Life and Spirit seminars and the first time I saw him I was in awe. I thought there was something special about this man he had a he had the authority about him, he had wisdom. Um, he was just, when he spoke, you were, it was like a magnet. You, you couldn't stop but listen to him. You, he was amazing, really. It's hard to explain, but he was like, you couldn't, you, you had to listen to every word. You hung on to every word he said. First of all, he loved the church and he wanted the church to be brought out in all its beauty. He lived, he, he died, yeah, everything he did was for the Catholic Church and he wanted to bring people to know the Catholic Church, to know the, the true faith, having a relationship with Jesus, basically. Yeah. So Miles taught us Bible readings, he taught us uh, how to pray, he, he prayed over people, he, he, had a, he had the gift of knowledge, the gift of healing, I mean, it, it's so vast. I don't think there's much Miles Dempsey couldn't do, you know, in faith or the prayer life. Miles was a saint because he put God first. He put God first in every way. And everybody knows he suffered. And of course, saints always suffer. It's part of what they go through. But suffering doesn't make you a saint. It's how you allow God into your suffering and praise God for it. That's what makes you a saint. Is praising God for the suffering that you're going through because you know he's using it for some greater good. And so when Miles would push himself out of his wheelchair into a normal chair, you could see the agony, but he would always say, all for you, Jesus, all for you. And for me, that's what makes a saint, is when you've got nothing left to give because you're giving everything and... The only prayer you can pray is all for you, Jesus, and you pray it. No blame attached, just all for you, Jesus. Like Jesus did for his father, every last drop of blood and sweat, it was all for the father. That's what makes Miles a saint. As the leader of the Community of Christ, Prince of Peace, and the chairman of New Dawn in the church, Walsingham, there are many people that, that should have been on this tribute but because of the pandemic it was very difficult to do the filming the many priests and bishops that have supported miles over the years the individual members of the prince of peace community the speakers that have been to new dawn all of these people that loved miles would want to add something so on their behalf on behalf of everybody who knew Miles, and especially on behalf of his family. It wasn't possible for his family to be part of this tribute. On behalf of everyone, I thank God for Miles Dempsey. I thank God that we all knew him, all in a different way, but we knew him and were all greatly blessed and graced by knowing this true man of God. I thank God for that. Amen.